example, now we can just start writing code for our validation when we are going to create a new block. So let's close this one and dive in. Let's just install a package called validator. So npm install validator. This is a very popular package, so we can use it in our code for validation. So there we go. I'll just make this one big because we don't want to be distracted with those errors behind the seal until we finish. Okay, now we have this one. I'm also going to store all our changes in a state. So everything within a form, I like to just put in a state. So basically, let's just bring them in. It will be a title, which at the beginning is nothing. Intro, the same. And the content. So if you remember in a blog edit, we can go and copy the handle change. So let's just, uh, there we go, handle change. We can copy it and come to the block create. Just quickly paste it here. And then use the handle change whenever we are changing something in our form. So I'll copy this part as well. And then go to the block create. We are going to paste it here. And in the text areas as well. I think the top one. And in the handle change, we are setting these states. And I believe we don't really need this ref anymore, so I can get rid of them. And come to our page and basically say this dot state dot title. And copy this one. Paste it here. Intro is the same and the content is the same. Content and intro. So now that we have everything there, we can get rid of these ref variables completely because we're not using ref anymore. So everything now is in state. So let's just quickly check this one. Refresh our page, inspect, and let's go to React, look for the block, block create. Now we have intro, title, and content. As soon as I type something, I have the title, I have the intro, and I have the content. So now we can start writing validation. So in order to write the validation, we are going to just create a function called validate, for example. And it will be arrow function in this case. And we are going to just return true for now. And so, and I am going to call the validate in our save method before everything. So I'll just say const is for valid. It will be this dot validate. And we are saying if the form is valid, then we can go and write more things. So I'm going to check it here. And if everything has validated so if everything has been validated now we can go and then check for the user and then go and add the block otherwise there is nothing going to happen so we need to work on the validate method now and then return true if actually everything is valid so i just remember that we don't really need these two anymore so here obviously we can just quickly write valid by default, we can say it's true unless we find some errors. And at the end, we're going to return the valid. 
And the first thing we're going to check, for example, in this case is title and then intro and the content. So let's just uh, extract all of them from the state. And then we can use the validator to just check if everything is valid or not. So we can say if validator. So we are looking, for example, in this case for the length. So we can say if the length of the title is between, for example, 5 to 13, then just then it's valid. So we need to pass another object here, which are going to have a minimum of five character and the maximum of, in this case, I'm going to say, I don't know, 13. We can write different things later. So basically, we are going to say if it is not valid, then we can say valid is false. So valid is false, and then we return the valid, which in this case, we are using it here. So, so far, we just check for the title, nothing more. I mean, you may just say, why are you really using validator? You're definitely right. We don't really need to use validator. We can definitely say if uh, title dot length less than five and then title dot length greater than 13. Then again, do the same things. So you are definitely right. We can just write the uh, uh, vanilla JavaScript to just do, does the same thing for us. But I wanted to use uh, validator just to show you how to use validator. If it is only about checking length or if it's only checking very, very simple things, Definitely vanilla JavaScript is a better approach and I would recommend to use this approach, but I just wanted to show you how to use the other way. So let's just comment this one for now. We will come back to this one later. Now that we have our validation is false, we also need to say what part of the validation was wrong. So I think I'm going to create variable here or object here and I will call it like errors. And then I'm going to just pass, in this case, for example, if the title has error, which by default, there is no error in the title. And then I'm also going to say the title error message. And then it will be also null or empty. And now we can just come here and say, what is the problem with the title? So we can say, errors dot title error so now we know there is something wrong in a title by setting this one and we can also say what was the problem dot title message and then we can easily say title needs to be between 5 to 13 characters. Basically, what we're really saying is that we are saying, yes, there is a problem in a title, and this is the problem. We are going to use this one later. So this is for the title. We should use the same things for the intro and the content. So I'm going to do it this too quickly. So now we are checking for the intro if the minimum is 10 characters and maximum is 200 and also for the content so we are doing the same things i mean as i said we can use this technique so let's just quickly use this technique here we are going to say if the content the length less than for example 50 character then the content has some errors and this is the problem so as you could see, we could use vanilla JavaScript or we could use validator. The reason I just brought in validator is to just show you how to use validator within, uh, within our Next.js. Validator is a very popular package. So let's have a look at it. As you can see, it's very popular and it's got a lot of downloads. And that's the reason why we're using it. 
Anyway, it is not mandatory, but as you can see, we have a lot of different type of validations here. And then you can sanitize it. So here, yes, you can sanitize it to float or integer or Boolean again after just validating it. So it's very handy and a lot of people are using it. And I recommend if you're going to do a more complex validation, use validator. Otherwise, just a vanilla JavaScript in this case would be enough. So now that we have these things, I need to bring also the intro error and intro message error and content error and the other one. So I'll just to quickly bring them in. And I think we are going to just use the same things inside the state. So let's just copy all of them and paste them there. So now that we have all of these things, so now we can come back to validate function. And before every validation, we just set everything to the initial values. So we can easily say this dot set state. Basically, we are going to pass errors. So now, before every validation, we are going to just say everything come back to the normal mode. So there is no error. And every time we press the save button, it's going to run the validation and then everything back to the default, unless we just validate it one more time and everything goes wrong. So now that we have all of these things, we also need at the end of the validation, we also need to just set the state one more time. We are going to use these error messages within our state after setting it, and then we're going to show it to the to the user. So let's just quickly go to the content of the page, which is a render method. And from there, we can just uh, do some tweaks. The first thing I'm going to add is I'm going just to show the message, a p tag with a class name. Help is danger. Basically, these two classes, help and is danger is Bulma. So now that we have these things, we can easily say this dot state. And then because we're working on a title, we can say title error message. And obviously, if there is an error, we are going to show it. Otherwise, it will be null and there, is be, there will be nothing here. So and I'm also going to just add some classes if there is error in order just to show a red border around the, the input. So let's just fix that one together as well. So we have the input by default. And also we are going to check if there is error in the title error. If there is an error, Yes, then we are going to show the is danger. Otherwise, just nothing. So I think we need to just grab this one and then put everything here. There we go. Yes, we are checking if there is a title error, then put this class. Obviously, there, you need to put a space because after input, you need a space. And if there is no title error, nothing. So let's have a look. If you come back here, refresh our page, make sure there is no error in the console. That's good. Now I press save. There we go. We have some errors. And it says the title need to be between 5 to 13 characters long. And this one is red. So let's just quickly do the same things for uh, intro and content. So now that we have everything's ready, let's just check it one more time. Refresh our page, press save. Yes, everything is red. 
and if we start just changing this one there we go now it is better and I'm going to just add one more thing here and this is going to be for example we're going to just show an icon on the right side here and there and there and if it is okay then we will just change it to tick box and if there is something wrong we're going to just show the error uh, icon there and if you go to the title where we have the control we need to add one class and it is going to be has icons right so it's plural so now that we have this one we can just easily add icon after input we're going to say obviously if we have the error we're going to show the icon and if everything is fine we're going to show the another icon so let's just write it there this dot uh, state title error So if there is any error in the title, we are going to show this one. Otherwise, we are going to show something else. And it is so simple here. So we're going to use material icon. And in order to use material icon, we need just to use a span. And within our span, we're going to use I class. And the class name should be material icon and inside there so we are saying if there is error the icon we're going to use is report problem underscore problem and also this part of the span so this part is material icon this part is bulma so we all need to add another class here and this one is going to be icon and is small and also is right so we have this icon if there is error and we're going to have the same things but the icon should be something different it means we don't really have any error and i'm going to use the icon called done so let's go and quickly check this one for now I'm going to refresh the page there we go everything is okay if I start writing something bad obviously it is between 15 so if I just press save we have this icon and if it is more than uh, five characters it will be all right but if you just notice that as soon as we just refresh the page we are showing this icon it means obviously the title and uh, title error is false and it's coming and showing this one so we need to make sure if we run the validate the validation or validate function then come and just set these things so we are going to our state on the top of the page and we can say validated by default it will be false and we are going to change it whenever we run the validation so we are going to say here validated will be true so we are saying we have run the validation inside the validate function and then inside inside the this block we can make sure if if we have the validated then come and run this one otherwise don't and I think it's really getting messy and in order to just rewrite and reuse these things it's better to just extract this part of the code and use it use it on top of here so let's just call it uh, validation validation input icon And then we will have a props definitely and then it will be arrow function so now that we have this one I can just bring them and paste them all here and I can say for the first part I can say if there is error show this one so let's just go on to the beginning and say if props dot error
just write some code otherwise this part so when there is error we are going to return this one and when there is no error you're just going to return this part so nothing fancy so far okay yeah the, the just code is trying to say okay because we have uh, nothing in the else statement only one item just return it no matter what so we get rid of the else statement and so far we haven't done anything specific so let's just quickly go and use this one and just remember that we have props.error if you just come here we can replace this one validation input icon and error would be this dot state that title error so if I get rid of it come back here refresh the page yes we have the same things as we as we expected but we also need to make sure if we have run the validation then just come and show these icons otherwise there should be no icon at all so we can say for example here validated and then the validated is dot state and then validated so now that we have validated in a props we can come to the top of the page and just return if if the props dot validated so if we have validation then we're going to run the rest otherwise just return null or we can just come here and return null so now we're not showing the icon unless we have run the validation let's go there there we go the proof is here so we don't see anything unless we run the save page so now that we have the icon here let's just quickly go and add the icons in the intro and content So now we can go to the page, refresh, we don't see anything. Let's go to the home page, there is nothing. We come back here, press save, we see errors. And as soon as you start typing and press save, if there is no error, it will be a tick box, otherwise, there will be a report problem icon. So now that we have this one, I think that would be so good to have a counter here to just count every character we write because we don't really know how many characters left because now it says 50, but we don't know how many more we need to write. And in order to do that one, that's very quick and easy. So let's just come back here. And just before this one, we can easily say, so this dot state, that content dot length so if this one is less than 50 and also we have error so if the content error is true then we're going to just output something otherwise we just don't need to say anything So here we are going to just write another paragraph with a P and say quickly just copy and paste. So length and then uh, here we can say 50 minus the length of the content and then just say characters left for example. Characters left and it's just better to have some classes here so i'm going to just say class name it will be help and is info so 
All we just did check the length is le if it is less than 50, and then we have error. Just come and show this paragraph. So let's just refresh the page. So at the beginning, there are some errors and 50 characters left. So let's call it let's validate. And if I press save, there is no error there. Intro with validation and here if I press save again still have 47 that one's gone content some text would be nice here validation there we go so if I press save now we should be able to save it in the past no matter what we could save it so I'll press save and there we go we have let's validate and we have the content and this is all about the validation and all we could do here uh, and I think now we have a nicer things and it would be also a good idea if you want to use the same technique in a blog edit to just validate the blog when you are editing it. So if you just want to copy and paste everything there, it should be alright and there should be no problem with that.